Chapter 12 The Guard Everyone knows the rest, the eruption of a third army, the battle broke into pieces, 86 mouths of fire thundering simultaneously, perch the first coming up with Bulow, Zayatan's cavalry led by Blucher in person, the French driven back, Marcognet swept from the plateau of Ahain, Durut dislodged from Papelotti, Donzalot and Quayet retreating, Lobau caught on the flank, a fresh battle precipitating itself on our dismantled regiments at nightfall, the whole English line resuming the offensive and thrust forward, the gigantic breach made in the French army, the English grapeshot and the Prussian grapeshot aiding each other, the extermination, disaster in front, disaster on the flank, the guard entering the line in the midst of this terrible crumbling of all things. Conscious that they were about to die, they shouted, Vive l'Empereur! History Records Nothing more touching than that agony bursting forth in acclamations. The sky had been overcast all day long. All of a sudden, at that very moment, it was eight o'clock in the evening the clouds on the horizon parted, and allowed the grand and sinister glow of the setting sun to pass through, athwart the elms on the Nivelles Road. They had seen it rise at Austerlitz. Each battalion of the guard was commanded by a general for this final catastrophe. Friant, Michel, Roguet, Harlot, Mallet, Poirot de Morvan, were there. When the tall caps of the grenadiers of the guard, with their large plagues bearing the eagle appeared, symmetrical, in line, tranquil, in the midst of that combat, the enemy felt a respect. For France, they thought they beheld twenty victories entering the field of battle, with wings outspread, and those who were the conquerors, believing themselves to be vanquished, retreated, but Wellington shouted, up, guards, and aim straight. The Red Regiment of English guards, lying flat behind the hedges, sprang up, a cloud of grape shot riddled the tricolored flag and whistled round our eagles, all hurled themselves forwards, and the final carnage began. In the darkness, the Imperial Guard felt the army losing ground around it, and in the vast shock of the rout it heard the desperate flight which had taken the place of the Vive l'Empereur, and, with flight behind it, it continued to advance, more crushed, losing more men at every step that it took. There were none. Who hesitated, no timid men in its ranks. The soldier in that troop was as much of a hero as the general. Not a man was missing in that suicide. Nee, bewildered, great with all the grandeur of accepted death, offered himself to all blows in that tempest. He had his fifth horse killed under him there. Perspiring, his eyes aflame, foaming at the mouth, with uniform unbuttoned, one of his epaulets half cut off by a sword stroke from a horse guard, his plaque with the great eagle dented by a bullet, bleeding, bemired, magnificent, a broken sword in his hand, he said, come and see how a marshal of France dies on the field of battle. But in vain, he did not die. He was haggard and angry. At Droet de Erlen he hurled this question, are you not going to get yourself killed? In the midst of all that artillery engaged in crushing a handful of men, he shouted, so there is nothing for me. Oh! I should like to have all these English bullets enter my bowels. Unhappy man, thou wert reserved for French bullets. Chapter 13 The Catastrophe